We're here to talk about a recruiting update for you and also talk about some potential brand building that the Sun Devils are doing right now for their football program. Let's hop into it on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Levels podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Levels. A special shout out to my everydayers that are here every day. And don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast and stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrad36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Levels. All right, guys. It was a really big recruiting weekend for Arizona State. We're going to be catching you up on that for the first two segments of the show before wrapping it up with a, a an idea that was thrown out by a fellow Sun Devils podcast. And we'll talk about that towards the end about brand building at Arizona State. But let's, let's get caught up on Arizona State Sun Devils recruiting. It was a big weekend. They had a lot of guys in for visits, both in-state and out-of-state guys. They were able to reel in uh, two commits over the weekend. And then last night, Monday night, they actually pulled in a third commit as well. The guys that they were able to pull in were wide receiver Colin Charles. He's a three-star prospect coming out of, oh my goodness, what is that? St. Martinville Senior? Where is that? Was he? He is the Louisiana kid. Yes. Uh, out of St. Martinville, Louisiana, five foot 11, 175 pounds, a three star prospect. This is actually the second player that the Sun Devils have pulled out of Louisiana, the other being linebacker Albert Smith, who committed back in May. And then the other player who visited and decided to commit was defensive lineman Mason Fleming. Fleming is 6'2, 250. So definitely some room for him to continue to grow and build into his body. Currently not ranked. I couldn't tell you whether or not uh, he's going to end up being ranked anything higher than a three-star on his 24-7 profile. Uh, He was previously a three-star prospect and his current uh, sports composite. I, if someone could explain the difference to me, I'd really appreciate it, but he does not have a composite score at the time, but he did previously have a three-star. So as far as I'm concerned, this is another three-star prospect. Uh, And then Mason coming out of Manville, Texas, gives Arizona State four prospects out of the state of Texas now. Anyone who's been watching the show knows exactly how happy that makes me to know that they are pulling those Texas kids. Next up, we've got another in-state kid but not from the Valley. They actually went a little North in order to recruit this kid. The third commit that they got Monday night, I don't believe he was visiting, but I might be wrong, was James Giggy. And Giggy is a defensive lineman coming out of Bradshaw Mountain High School. Yes, that's that's real. Bradshaw Mountains are, are real for anyone who didn't know. And I don't know if I have ownership, but I like to pretend I do when I do drive past the Bradshaw Mountains up north to see my grandma. But neither here nor there. They pulled him out of Bradshaw Mountain High School. It's another defensive line prospect. I know that 24-7 Sports called him a sleeper defensive line prospect. I don't believe he's ranked. I imagine this is probably another three-star kid. But end of the day, the star rankings aren't the most important thing right now. The most important thing for Arizona State is they're really starting to build an identity with the way that they recruit, the way they want to recruit, and where they're looking to recruit. We'll talk more in detail about that later on in the show. But here's my thoughts on these kids. I love the direction that they're going. They're bringing in these guys, and they're clearly leaving – an impression on them to have two kids commit to you during the, during the visit is an awesome sign. And there's lots of rumors circulating around that there's going to be more commits from this group that just visited Arizona state this past weekend. There's more visits set up in the future. 
I think that the recruiting is really starting to get rolling for Arizona State. But looking at these kids in particular, I like that they're continuing to make the wide receiver position so important for the team. Colin Charles, now the third receiver. Uh, if you want to include Dylan Tapley, who is listed as an athlete, but from my understanding, people believe Tapley is a receiver. That's four guys for next year's class that play that position. They're looking at more tight ends as well. Like they, they are going all in on becoming a good wide receiver college. And there's some history there. You've had Nikhil, you've had Jalen, you've had Ayuk, you've had Darby, you've had lots of great players over the last 10 years that have been drafted to the NFL. Continuing to make that a point of strength, absolutely here for it. Fleming is the first defensive lineman that the team was able to get. And this is a unit that definitely needs lots of reinforcements. We're going to find out in 2023 what the unit is made out of, but even beyond 2023 where it's already a weakness, it's it's going to need more and more help at the position as well. Fleming, the first guy, and now Giggy, the second guy. So two defensive linemen that were able to commit over the last handful of days. Love to see it. Bottom line here, I really like the direction that Arizona State is starting to go with their 2024 recruiting class. I like the kids they're bringing in. I like everything about what's going on but again we'll talk in a little bit i love the the direction that this seems to be going in terms of the brand building that arizona state is doing right now but again bottom line i love what they're accomplishing at the moment but i also love fanduel because right now fanduel is giving you guys a no sweat first bet up to twenty five hundred dollars Guys, I know that the NBA Finals just ended last night, and congratulations to the Denver Nuggets, but that doesn't mean that the great promos that are happening every day are disappearing. And it's a safe and secure app where you can get paid instantly, so you need to make your way the number one place for all your sports betting action. It's FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and get that no sweat first bet up to $2,500. Again. FanDuel.com slash locked on for your no sweat first bet up to $2,500. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Guys, thank you guys as always for tuning in. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. And remember, this is going to be your best place to get through the dog days of the summer as we get ready for an exciting upcoming year. Now, it wasn't just these guys that committed that were at Arizona State. There were several other players that were in attendance as well. I know that in terms of in-state guys, Dylan Hip was the most prominent player there. He is the three-star tight end. He's the number one tight end prospect in the state of Arizona. And he's somebody that the team has been very high on for quite a while now to get him into the program. They really, really seem intent on getting him to stay in state, they're going to need him. But there was a lot of guys that were in attendance as well. The two most noteworthy guys in terms of like who had really good weekends with the team, you had Rodney Bamaj and Chris Johnson. I believe that's Chris Johnson Jr. too as well. But to my knowledge, no relation to CJ2K. Chris Johnson's a very, very, uh, universal name i suppose there's a lot of chris johnson's in the world it's very unlikely this is the same chris johnson anyways neither here nor there ronnie bama is a three-star corner prospect out of dickinson texas and chris johnson is a four-star corner prospect out of alito texas these two guys seem to had seem to have had a very good visit at arizona state over the past weekend I know that Bamaj had posted on his Instagram and everything and was really happy about that. There was a report that came out that Chris Johnson was very happy about his visit as well. I believe Dylan Hip had a good time. There was a lot of guys there. And hearing that they have a good visit is great news because you don't expect to bring in, just an example, you don't expect to bring in eight guys and have all eight of them commit. In fact, 
not having any of them commit wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world either. Getting two guys to commit from that visit, big time win for you. What you do from there is how you're going to be able to land these kids in the future. Having good impact with these kids is going to leave that lasting impression so that they will potentially circle back around when they take more visits because this is certainly not the final stop for these guys, especially a four-star prospect. He's got a lot more visits lined up. I'm sure Ronnie Bamage has plenty of visits lined up as well. I'm sure Dylan Hip does being a number one positional prospect in state. I'm sure that there's lots of other opportunities for all these kids that visited. From here, it'll be up to Arizona State to leave that lasting impression that when they do go to their next visit, that they still think and they still consider Arizona State to potentially be their home. I believe Santana Wilson was also in attendance, but don't quote me on that just because I'm not 100% sure. For what it's worth, Wilson is a four-star in-state prospect. I believe he has an offer. Not 100% sure. I'm just, I, I guess I'm more speculating than anything else. But bottom line, love that these guys were saying that they had good interviews or interviews, uh, good visits with the team. This is the direction that you can start to build more credibility off of and build more overall identity with. And I think that that's actually a really good transition into the final portion of the podcast right here. But again, one more time, make sure wherever you're getting your podcast to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. All right, let's talk about the brand building. So I've talked about this for a while, and this is not the first time that I brought this up, but the guys over at the Phoenix Sun Devils Podcast Network with all the PHNX sports and all them, it popped up on my feed. And it really, the way they described it, I loved it. And I wanted to piggyback off of them a little bit. So thank you guys for throwing it out there. Interested in throwing my take out as well. Now they talked about how the example they used, Notre Dame. People look at Notre Dame football and they talk about what it means to be a Notre Dame football player. We want to eventually start to build that same reputation at Arizona State, and we want people to look at Arizona State and have this identity behind them, right? We want them to know what it's like to be an Arizona State Sun Level, and we want people to look at the program with some sort of direction and with some sort of continuity here. This is a team that's rebuilding, and they're They're remaking their image as well. This is not a team that should have the direction that it has, but that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Arizona State clearly knows who it is and what it wants to be, and it's working on getting to that point, and so much of that credit deserves to go to Kenny Dillingham. And the direction that Dillingham has so quickly placed the Sun Devils football program in is absurd. I mean, at this point last year, and honestly, the several years that we had with Herm Edwards as the as the head coach here, recruiting is 10 times better, 100 times, 1,000 times better than what it was. We already have eight commits. We are halfway through June, and we have eight commitments for the 2024 class. And they're, they're important commitments. You're getting... Quality players, Elijah Besa is the highest ranked kid that we have. I know that other kids like uh, Dylan Tapley and Zachariah Sample are four-star prospects, depending on where else you want to look. They're attacking Texas. They've now got four commits from the state of Texas. They've got their local kid in Dylan Tapley. They've got two kids in the state of Arizona. They're recruiting wide receiver heavily. They're recruiting defensive back heavily. They're they're clearly implementing the ideas that they already had in mind and putting it all together so that we already know the direction that they want to be headed towards. That's what really impresses me the most about this recruiting class right now. And, and that brand building that they're doing, people are looking at Arizona state 
these prospects especially and they feel comfortable and confident in where the team is going because i promise you there are very few times that kids are going to look at a college program and willingly go to a real rebuilding program if there's offers for them to go and start winning right away they're probably going to be looking at those spots whether that's power five or not these kids aren't interested in losing they're interested in winning they're interested in building their name and they're interested in getting to the next level arizona state is already making it appear as though they're offering that will they i don't know this could be a losing program for like 10 years for all we know we don't know but the point is the perception that these kids have of it is not that or else they wouldn't be committing here and because of that i truly believe that this is going to get arizona state back in the right back in the right direction you bring in the right kids with the right mentality it's hard to lose football games at least at a consistent level Again, I'm not saying you're suddenly going to turn into Alabama or Georgia or anything like that, but at least you're not going to be continuing to sit in in the slow lane and not moving forward and wondering whether or not you're ever going to be getting back to winning football games. I think that this team has that direction right now. You love to see eight kids already, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to get into double digits before – the start of training camp at the end of July. I think that you're really going to have a very good shot to get to that point. You're bringing in lots of guys. You're leaving these lasting impressions. I love it. Also, I love the social media presence that this team is having right now. That's not something that they previously had, but yet Kenny Dillingham is out here on Twitter every single day like it's his second job. He's tweeting the recruits. He's retweeting them when they say, hey, taking a visit. Hey, these are my final guys. And like, he's taking an interest in these kids. He's taking pictures with them. They're doing all their stuff during the visits and everything. But Kenny Dillingham, who was touted as a good recruiter during his time uh, with Oregon and with Florida State and pretty much everywhere he's gone, has brought that to Arizona State but so is Brian Carrington, and so has Rashad Samples. These guys are also doing their part in recruiting these kids to the program. You get everyone to buy in, this team is going to turn around very, very quickly. So I love the direction they're going right now. This was a big weekend for Arizona State Sun Devils football in terms of recruiting, and I have a feeling that it's not going to be the last weekend that we have to talk about. I'm looking forward to everybody else who's coming to the program. I'm looking forward to more people committing to the team. And I am really just in such anticipation of what the next move is going to be. I, I can hardly contain myself. And I want to know what you guys think as well. So leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube. Hit me up on Twitter to let me know what you think as well. You can find me at RichieBrads36 in the podcast at LO underscore Sun Levels. That's all that I have for you guys on today's edition of the show. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Remember, wherever you're getting your podcast, to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to get an update whenever we post new content and stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter at RichieBrad36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. But you guys, that's all that I have for today. Until next time, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devils.